MaxBand applications are pretty much the same as any other application, but in this case, we need to find the maximum min value of a quadratic. So what we need to do is we need to find the vertex. Um, on these first two, I'm gonna just show you two different ways. Typically, I complete the square every time, but sometimes it's easier to just use um, negative b over 2a to find the x and then sub that back in for y. So in this first one, we'll just complete the square. Um, we've got negative and then x squared minus 14x, half of 14 is 7, square, we get 49, plus 1, plus 49, because inside the brackets we'd really have a negative, we get negative x minus 7 squared plus 50, and you don't have to, but a lot of the times you want to say when it occurs, so we've got a max of 50 here, the reason it's a max is because of the negative out front, making this quadratic face down at x equals 7. Now, if I wanted to find it using negative b over 2a, so our x value is negative b over 2a, we'd have x equals negative 10, oops, negative 10 over 2 times 2, which is negative 10 over 4, which is negative 2.5, and then we're just going to sub in to find our y value. We got 2 times negative 2.5 plus 10 times negative 2.5 minus 5. That's squared, sorry. Um, 2.5 times is 12.5. 2.5 squared is 6.25. And then we've got times by 2. Minus 25 minus 5. It's going to be negative 17.5. So therefore, in this case, we have a minimum, because we have a positive A value, of negative 17.5 at x equals negative 2.5. All right. So whenever we're finding the max or min of a quadratic, you want it to be in vertex form, obviously, because that gives us the max or min value. But you can use the negative B over 2A I'm probably not going to during this note, but it can be done. Okay, so find the product, our minimum product, of two numbers whose difference is 10. So first thing we need to do is make a let statement. So in this case, I'll say let x be the first number. Okay, now I'm not going to use a y value. I'm going to just say the product then equals... We're going to have x times x plus 10. Well, then that's going to be x squared plus 10x. I'm going to go ahead and just complete the square right here. Half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So then we've got x plus 5 squared minus 25. So therefore, the minimum product is going to be our y value of our vertex is negative 25 with the numbers and we can give the numbers here it's not asking for them this extra information but we've got negative 5 and 5 negative 5 and 5 are 10 apart and that's going to give us the minimum product all right the next one Determine the maximum area of a triangle in square centimeters if the sum of its base and height are 12 centimeters. So here, we'll just make a right angle triangle because it's easier to work with. So let x be the base. It could be the base or the height, it doesn't really matter. The other one's going to be 12 minus x because they have to add to 12. So then our area is one half times base times height. Um, so we're going to have x times 12 minus x. Now I'm going to multiply it all together and I'm going to rearrange it just a little bit. So we're going to have negative one half x squared plus 6x. Now when I complete the square, I'm going to take the negative one half out. 
get x squared minus 12x. Half of 12 is 30, or 6, and 6 squared is 36. Okay, now um, we have the negative out front, so we have to add again, and then half of 36 is 18. So then we're going to get negative 1 half x minus 6 squared plus 18. So in this case, the minimum area, or sorry, the maximum area, therefore the max area is 18. And this would be base and height are both equal to 6. And that's just coming from the vertex. I'm taking this solution to find my base and height, and the y value is my max or my min. All right, so moving on. So you should have done one of these types of questions last year. Um, this is the student council is running a semi-formal dance to raise money for charity. Last year, the tickets sold for $15 each and 500 people attended. The student council has decided to raise the ticket price for this year's dance. They determined that every increase the dance attendance would decrease by 10 people. So what ticket price would maximize the revenue? So this year it doesn't really matter what the maximum, or this question, excuse me, doesn't matter what the maximum revenue is. We want to know the ticket price. Um, the big thing about this is, is our revenue. The equation is going to be revenue equals the sales times the price. So if we were to make our brackets, okay, we're going to have something like um, originally the sales were 500 people. Okay, so we had 500 sales. Okay, um, for every time, so 500. And originally our price was $15. Now, for every dollar that we increase the price, we lose, um, how many people? 10 people. So by looking at that equation, X is not the dollar increase, X is the number of increases. So let X be the number of $1 increases. Okay. So it's the number of $1 increases. The reason that's important is because if it wasn't $1, we're looking at like $5 increases or $10 increases. That's going to change our value. So here we have 1 times x. So 1 times x is just 1. It doesn't actually change anything. But it could be 5x or 10x if it was $5 or $10. So then we're going to just go through and we're going to solve this, we're going to get negative 10x squared um, is the first one. Then we're going to get, I'm going to just use my calculator here so that I don't mess up. So we've got what 500x minus 150. So we've got 350x. And then We've got 500 times 15, so plus 750, or 7,500. So now we're going to take out negative 10. We get x squared um, and then we've got minus what is that? So divide that. So minus 35x. And then half of 35 is 17.5. And then square that. We get plus 306.25. And then plus 75. 
zero, zero, plus 3,600, or sorry, 6,250. So then this ends up being negative 10 x minus 17.5 squared plus 10,562.50. So then what that tells us is that we have a max revenue of $10,562.50 with 17.5 increases of the price. Now we're increasing the price by $1 each time. So the price is going to be 15 plus 17.50, which is going to be 32.50. So therefore the max revenue is 10.562.50. With tickets, oops, at thirty two fifty. All right, last one. The height of a football kicked from the ground is given by the function h at t equals blah 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 or the height is in meters, the time. When will the football reach its maximum height? What is the maximum height? Really, we're going to do it all at once because we're just going to put it in vertex form here. So we've got negative 5t squared plus 20t. I'm going to factor out that negative 5, that t squared, minus um, 4t. Half of 4 is 2. We're going to add, or whoops, 2 squared is 4. And then we're going to have plus 20 on the outside. So we're going to get negative 5. And then t minus 2 plus 20. So therefore, we have a max height of... 20 meters after two seconds.